The following episode is brought to you by Poison City Brewing, proud makers of Durban Poison Cannabis Lager, the beer that invites you to live your poison. Guys, welcome back to another episode of Sludge Underground. Tonight, I have Yumi and the Harmony with us. And I say this a lot, but one of my favorite bands of all time. Guys, introduce yourselves. Hello. Hello, guys. Thanks for the kind words. Jeez. Thanks for having us, Marcel. Thank you for being such a huge fan and for having us on the show. I'm super keen. Yeah, so (laughs) introduce yourselves individually and what you do in the band. Well, we'll go by importance. So we'll start with me and end. Start with the bass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. We'll end with Kate. Yeah. Uh, just joking. We'll end with me. So <laughs> I'm Carl. I play guitar and I tell the dad jokes. He's the dad of the band. He's also I'm the not- vein of the band if you um, didn't get that. But if you ever want to know what tone is, then just ask Carl. Inside this internet, because sure, all of the <laughs> main ways. Okay, who's next? All right, I'll go next. Uh, I'm Brendan, and I play the bass, and I do the backing vocals. And yeah. he's got the good jokes. And I've got the, some of the good jokes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kate, and I sing stuff. And she doesn't tell jokes. No. Oh, come on. I was going to say that. <laughs> 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 They're all Pretty jokes, good. apparently. Open. Caleb? Uh, I'm Caleb. I play drums and I like fart noises. I was going to say the fart jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something about that percussion that just, you know. Like I'm when you replace all these drums with fart bags. He would be so happy. I'd yeah. be stoked. It'd also improve our he music. Could, he could refill them though. He could. <laughs> Yo, with, real fart. with real farts. Not, not just oh. air. Real farts. Exactly. Like... like uh, like bag bagpipes, percussive bagpipes filled with farts. Yes, <laughs> that sounds yes. amazing. <laughs> uh, he, he's Just, one of the few that can fart on cue. Yeah. Oh, so this is devolved already. Yeah, that was. The, <laughs> I, I'm not sure about devolved. That's actually pretty impressive. I thought so. Well, <laughs> we 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 come we come fully prepared, and lots of improv. Tell us a bit more about the band, uh, what kind of genre you guys are, what sort of music you make for someone who potentially hasn't ever heard you guys before. No one say Paramore. But I like to think of us as like a new age pop punk, I suppose. Yeah, that's We're a good trying idea. That's to, a good way of putting it. Yeah, so just trying to combine all of our favorite genres into one and create something awesome. No, that's great. You uh, guys have been around for quite some, some time, as long as I can remember, as long as I've been in the music scene. Yeah, I think we're in our seventh year now, right? Mm, Seven years. Seven years as a band. But we've all been in the industry longer than that, whether we were, I don't know, part of it as fans and up and coming musos and stuff. We've been part of it for a lot longer. But as a band, we've been together for seven years. Yeah. Yeah. We've definitely, uh, we've gone from sounding, I think, obviously, when you were in uh, in Joburg, it must be like night and day from then. Yeah, I playing shows with uh, with running from a full moon, and just we were a different band over there. I'm yeah. not, I'm, I'm not sure. As from the the standpoint of a fan and someone out looking looking in, I, w- I would say it's been a an evolution. There's definitely oh, yeah. still some of the factors from when I'd first seen you guys versus now, and it's it's great to evolve. And you guys have definitely taken it multiple steps further. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, we do try. We do try and and become Innovate. tighter as a band using uh, metronome and tracks and stuff. So we've come a long way in in terms of the technology on stage. Um, the professionalism of it, yeah. Yeah, and professionalism, and we've learned a lot because that's that's what comes with playing a lot, is mm-hmm. you learn a lot, and you must think- be willing to learn. Otherwise, you will never improve. So we try and take criticism as best we can and better ourselves for the next show. Yeah. Yeah. I think the way we've always written songs and the way I think we'll continue to write, like I love writing our songs with the thought of playing them on a huge rig and like 
to them just oh. being enormous. I think that we write songs that we want to sound enormous and like with the imagination that would be. On. Yeah, we've come to that point where we want to not just be like, okay, this sounds cool. Let's make it. It's more of, yeah, this sounds cool. What's it going to sound like in the end as well? Because obviously, I mean, I think for us, our main thing would be a live show. We're like, that's where we stand out. That's our live thing, our live performance. So obviously if we're going to write a song, we, we always imagine it as what would it sound like live and how can we make it as cool as possible live? Yeah, definitely yeah. agree. No, that, that's a great like, perspective of it, also approaching your songs. And you know, talking about you guys saying that you know, you've tried to become tighter as a band and more professional and whatnot. I remember the days of being on the same lineup as you guys and always sort of looking up to you and being like, damn, that band's got their shit together. And <laughs> like, it's <laughs> so it's, you know, like you guys have come a hell of a long way. You've done some really impressive shows. You've played with some impressive bands. And then that's not even talking about the album that you guys have just released. It's, it's been incredible watching you guys going through this journey since I first saw you as a band versus to where you are now. It's, it's, it's incredible. Oh, thank you, man. That's, thank you yeah. so much. That Thanks means a lot. lot. Appreciate it. <laughs> when when yeah, I first I watched you guys, Brendan didn't even sing. Yeah, I wasn't oh. singing. Like how, yeah, how, really how was true. that journey, man? Like, was that something that came naturally? Did it come, was it born out of necessity no, or was it something I mean, you wanted I, to do? Look, I always, I always had sort of a singing ability. I mean, when I was, when I was learning how to play my instrument, my mom always said to me, cause I, I wanted to learn guitar and then I discovered the bass. So I went to go learn bass as well. And then my mom said to me, well, listen, if you want to be playing music, you got to learn how to sing as well. So she signed me up for singing lessons when I was a kid as well. So when I got into the band, I mean, I kind of already knew a little bit of singing. Like I didn't think I could sing bad. I just, just didn't think it was that great. So I was, I was a bit self-conscious about it. And uh, it kind of just, I kind of forced myself. And then the others were like, no, did you got to do something? Um, even Kate's well, so brother. A lot Kate, of coaxing from me because yeah. I wanted to sing as well. Yeah. So they were kind of just like, dude, you got to do it. Just give it a try. So eventually I just... It just kind of happened. <laughs> I think, uh, I think I, I do remember something specific from like the battle for cranked up. I think it was like five years ago, five or six years ago, we did a thing called yeah. battle for cranked up. So you basically have to, uh, obviously it's in a way you get you, we battled for like opening slots, uh, well, not opening slots, but like the early slots of cranked up. And I remember Wayne Longbeard, uh, Wayne, Basha, Bushy, I don't know, Bushy, no, Bushy. But Wayne from uh, Davies actually afterwards really enjoyed our show, but he did have the critique of, of you know, we need something to fill it up, some, some mm. more like a bit of a lower end vocal, even just, I think he just meant, I think he was speaking directly to, to Kate and Brennan and he mentioned having like just even an octave. Mm. And yeah, it, it was funny that we didn't do any harmonies. Uh, That's so that because we couldn't really figure them out. <laughs> <laughs> but the name doesn't mean <laughs> the name doesn't mean uh, to have harmonies in your song. You, me, and the harmony, as in like music. The name means you, me, and the and harmony, harmony of it all. Not the well, harmony and harmony in in that context. It it can mean two things. It can mean it can two mean, things. It can mean two things. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, that's, you, I don't think it's a super rad band name. I have no idea what it means. Time, you don't even know what the lyrics of our songs are because you just play the drums do you know the drums of our songs yes i do <laughs> i can't I mean, play that's also kind of check, check that's kind of our vibe that's kind of our vibe like i mean our name is open to interpretation so is our music so is the melody so is the lyrics you know you kind of can take it to yourself you um find something that appeals to you and relate to that i mean that's kind of what our go-to thing has been Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely. I, 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 try, I try and write lyrics that, I mean, they are personal to me in some form or another, but I try and write them so that anybody can relate whatever situation they are in, you know, and maybe it will help them. I think that's one of my biggest goals is to write a song that I know has helped somebody. Because I know that's what I listen to music for and what I listen to lyrics for. I always listen to something and it either helps me through something or it I relate to it because I'm going through the same thing. So that's why or how I try and write my lyrics. Yeah, I think, yeah, it should mean something. It, it's cool when something that we do can mean something 
different to every to 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 anybody. You know, it, it can mean what they need it to mean. Mm. Oh. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah, cool. right. <laughs> It's such a, like a, a, a interesting perspective into it, though, and that everything being open for interpretation. I guess even amongst yourselves, you might interpret the things differently as than your fans would, which yeah. gives a lot of room for people to attach themselves to music for different reasons, and that's great. That opens you up to so many different audiences. I would expect. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I hope so. You know, if. Uh... Yeah, I think that's an important way. Like I've often gone and said, and like you sometimes research what's the meaning behind the thing, and it doesn't mean that to you. And mm. like I thought this concept meant this for so many years, but when they came out and said this is actually what it means, I was like blown away. But like it still means what it meant to me. You know, that's how it makes you mm. feel, and that's how the art kind of makes you feel, and that's how the the emotion of it makes you feel and that's how you kind of interpret it in your soul i kind of i kind of think that's how um how paralysis is if you've heard paralysis yeah i mean it, yes, it's I quite raved like, about it <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 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 um like if you hear the lyrics you might think okay well maybe it's this person that um that uh i, I wouldn't say kate but someone would like you know you know um but it, in actual fact it's more about uh, an incubus that's what the whole lyrics are about right so you can kind of delve deeper and figure that out i mean that, that'd be cool if someone figured that out but they can also take it into that other approach that's what the, the whole music is for you i think yeah, the music the you. enjoy it's it for you <laughs> that's it the feel <laughs> about the feels like I've, yeah. I've been listening to your music as you guys have released things now the the title of the song is escaping me now but it's one where you go into this completely different t- like timing and sort of a breakdown that was one of the first things guide that you, you go hey <laughs> guide you that's guide you. <laughs> no 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 no, 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 no it's Who one of the was this like years ago? Yeah, dude. This was like one of the first singles. You guys released a single where it was featuring... Oh, was it Sweeter With You? With a like... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly that one. Yes. Like, I just remember having that on repeat for so long because just there were so many cool aspects of it. And then obviously here the first we time... <laughs> and then hearing we're Ben sing for time. the first time in... Uh, I think it was Cliffside. Of the, I saw you guys play that live. And I yeah. literally spent months begging you guys to record that. <laughs> I think I remember you asking us how we came up with such cool, like, harmonies and stuff with that song when you saw it live. Yes. Or, it like, was, overlaying vocals. Yes, that was because it was something that, at the time, we was running from a full moon. We were trying to sort of be corporate into our songs. And then seeing you guys do it live was just like, God damn! This is why we look up yeah. to these dudes. So, like, there, there was a there was a reason behind the question as well. We, we may have try, been trying to mimic it at that time. That's awesome. Well, mm. that's, I, I'm that's awesome. I'm like honored that you would try and mimic it or be inspired by it. That's why we do it. You know, we've been inspired by our heroes and our yeah. people that we look up to and influences that we like. And then to know that we've done that for somebody else is just, it's great. It's like a full circle, you know? It's uh, quite surreal. Today, I don't know, last night uh, we, had, uh, we had a fan upload. It's actually the drummer for Threes and Seven. Oh, Lorenzo, yes. I saw, I saw his cover of, um, what was it? Which, which song? Astronauts. Yes. Astronauts. Yes. But I was like, such a cool feeling that somebody hey. wanted that they like, they want to take a thing that you wrote and they want it's to do it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Never thought that would happen to us or me as a person. Yeah, I know it's crazy. It's nuts. Okay, so, Marcel, so, yeah, wait, Caleb. Yeah. Stop falling out, right? yeah. <laughs> I've tried actually learning your parts, Carl, and yeah, I'm not going to go down that road. But anyway, um, Caleb, okay. as a as a as a drummer, like it's it must be very interesting to watch someone try and perform something that you wrote. What was your your judgment on that cover? Like, you, did you did you watch it? Was it was really good. Um, you know, I'm always keen to see how other people interpret the way I play because um, often like small things get like get like missed. But he actually did a pretty solid job there was like one or two tiny things like when it came to the fills and stuff but like 98 percent of that's the way he did it was perfect was uh 
Hundred percent. So if he's listening to this, whatever, uh, good job, dude. You nailed it. Like you proper nailed oh, it. You. Really cool. I'll, I'll be sure to tag so, uh, him and mention. At least we know if I if I ever can't make a a gig, we'll hit you up. <laughs> he's got a backup. Yeah. Got a backup guy. <laughs> you just need to pick up some weight and grow a big beard. <laughs> what what I want to talk about Quite is your your journeys, your separate journeys through in, in music, in the scene, in the community and whatnot. So I, I'm not sure, like I, I don't recall having ever seen any of you in other bands before seeing you guys as Yumi and the Harmony. What what nope, were you guys Caleb's sort of doing? <laughs> I think Caleb's the only one, yeah. You were the we, only uh, one in Gans before Yumi and the Harmony. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, yeah. We studied uh, music, uh, Kate, Caleb and myself, we studied at Copa. Uh, and we met that I think we we wanted to do like cover shows and stuff at first and make money. Look how that turned out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we wanted to make money in music. I think we just wanted to. There was certain music which we we liked, and we were like, I want to play that." When we got together, yeah, we had all these songs and whatnot, but the ideas just came out. There was ideas, and we played them. Yeah, no, that's that was before before that obviously. That was even before Brandon was even in the picture. Like yeah. it was just the three of us, and mm. it probably sounded terrible. But at the time, we were like, "Wow, like, this is so legit. This is so yeah, cool." Like, three or four songs before Brandon even joined. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think what's especially cool about you, me, and Harmony is that we're individually always researching, always training ourselves, always like learning about our instruments. And like always mm-hmm. trying to, every member of this band has favorite of their, like I look up to Guthrie Govan and I, and I like kind of try to, uh, try to watch as much guitar stuff as I can to up my game. And I know that every, like I can always be progressing myself. And I think everybody else here feels like that. I know Brendan, he, mm-hmm. uh, he feels that way about uh, Chili Peppers, Victor Wooten, so many, same thing about uh, Kelly. Yeah. Tra- Hey, the complete hey. opposite genre of what we actually do. Yeah, we also, yeah, we, we all, all of us like completely different things as well, and look up to completely different uh, uh, musicians. It's 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 pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, we all we all stuff. like the same stuff, but we all do have our own stuff that we like. Um, which yeah, I suppose we bring those elements into what we like as well, and I guess that's how our. <laughs> I guess you can call it this uh, our Y Man sound now. I mean, we 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 we've definitely come to our own sound, yeah. And I think that's if that's from each person's element that they've added. No, yeah, no, definitely. Like bringing in different inspirations, different things, and basically coming together and merging all of those things together, that creates an entirely new sound in a completely different way than you would expect it to do so, because everyone's influence adds something else to it. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, definitely. And this is still <laughs> my first band. <laughs> my first full band. Yeah. You got the, the, the long I, like the long service award there for <laughs> <laughs> the long shot before, one. Yeah. <laughs> before I went to Copa, I was in a death metal band that never gigged <laughs> called Womb Infestation. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> before Copa Day, death metal though, oh. <laughs> I when I was at Copa. I was in a band that never gigged with Wade Flower Day called the Biscuit Smugglers. What's Wade? <laughs> Wade Flower Day. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And Wade screamed. What did he? He did screaming vocals. And he actually did them pretty good. You know, you're going to, like, nothing compared to his bass chops. I don't know if you saw his bass chops. <laughs> I didn't see that. That's what? so good. What was that? Yeah, his video covered. was incredible. Like. <laughs> I'm going to go watch it. I know it's going to be something completely unexpected, though. <laughs> it's, it's some sick he play one wrong note. I'm not expecting exactly what he's going to do, and that's nothing. He's just going to sit he there. Play one wrong but yeah. Okay, I'll go, I'll go watch it. So, yeah, that's, that's been my journey before WAMAT. I did a lot of classical guitar when I was little. We got, like, a Stedford Awards, if you want to see him. <laughs> you be show, show them up to the camera it won't make it in the episode it'll just be really awkward for people to like wonder what we're all looking at <laughs> and all just say wow at the same time <laughs> wow <laughs> now you guys have had the chance to open up and play with some crazy 
international bands, one of the ones that stands out the most to me is you got the chance to play with our last night. Tell me more about that experience. What was that like? You guys obviously got to meet the guys and you know, what, mm. what was that experience like? Just walk me through that. It was surreal. It was difficult for me. I mean, just because we've been told by um, the jam pack guys, like, listen, you guys have to be, you can't be starstruck. You know, you can't be like that guy that's like, oh my gosh, you know, it's them. It's them. You, you have to play it cool. But you don't don't play it cool so that it looks like you're playing it cool. Like you must just be normal. <laughs> don't act normal. You that know? just stresses so a, that, that stresses the person out more than anything else. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, no, it's like am I am get I that being, right was difficult. Am I being that person? Am I being too fangirl or am I being too, you know, um I, what's the word? Too too cool, too nonchalant about too this. Too cool. Yeah, yeah, nonchalant. It was you know? it was super hard for me because I'm like a ultra fan bitch for our last night. <laughs> like <laughs> I love them so much. And I remember when when Cole and I went to Carfax uh, early, and um, where they were yeah. setting a sound check. I flipping. I don't know what to do. I was like, I, I'm gonna die. Yeah. I'm gonna die. Like there they are. There's 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 Tim in real life. You know, and he's like one of my one of my biggest inspirations. And uh, I kind of like didn't say anything and tried not to like go and greet them because I was worried that I would be weird. And that inadvertently also, makes you weird I, as well. Like the guy from across the room staring in your general direction. <laughs> <laughs> and, point. and also you don't want to be that person because they obviously get a lot of people coming up to them, like asking for autographs and stuff. Like I haven't, this really sucks. We've played with three international bands. Well, actually five international five. bands, if you include, yeah. if you include intervals and in Memphis, Memphis. But um, with the ones that were like where we were actually part of the, the main attraction bill, you know, those three bands, I don't have one picture with any of the bands because you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be like, oh, can no. I have a picture? Oh, can, can we just take a selfie real quick? Also, I'm one of those people that looks terrible in pictures. So I don't just want to quickly snap one because there's going to be that moment where I'm going to have one of those dead faces or my eyes are closed or you know, I look terrible and they're going to look great. And then that's my photo, you know? So I'm always nervous to take a photo and it looks terrible and I don't want to but, just disturb uh, their day, you know? You know you'll, when you guys play with the internationals, you'll see they're like, they're always moving. So like to get, to get them yeah. at a spot where like you feel comfortable and like, then they've got this uh, whole kind of press thing where, where they go up and they talk to fans who got, bought the early bird VIP tickets or whatnot. And, you know, you don't want to take away from th those people's experiences because they're obviously, uh, they, they've, they've paid been, they, they, they they're paid, supporting, they paid to be there. Yeah. yeah. And they're supporting the venue. So, so you mm -hmm. got to find your, you got to find the right time. You know, it's really it's not weird. Always, it's not we, always easy. We were, we were lucky enough um, when we went over to Cape Town with, uh, with our last night, um, Jam Pact allowed us to go and chill with the guys after the, the last show. Which that was pretty awesome because then we yeah we all had a shot opportunity to get close and personal with the guys and chat to them yeah. and they're all such rad dudes as well which kind of like made it so much better you know talking to Tim and and Woody and Matt and and Trevor um, <laughs> it was like talking to normal people like talking to Tim was like talking to another human being it wasn't like he he didn't make it seem like yeah I'm super famous you're nothing it was like I'm just a normal dude talking to another dude another the only intimidating yeah. person for me was Trevor. Yeah, he definitely. Yeah, he, he's a present that I. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I, like. I I got on with Woody pretty well. Um, yeah, Woody is easy to get along with. Yeah, Trevor, he's super Trevor cool. Fun, but like you can see, he's got like he's uh, he's definitely got that rock star kind of. Oh, I, yeah. I don't mean in a bad way. Like it's got almost you like. You gotta a have some ego to be a rock star. You gotta have some ego. Like, can you imagine no, if whatever. you if you had like self conscious thoughts all the time, you would never be able to play a show you know it's you like would never get on like stage presence. you gotta have some part of it. super nice yeah, guy you have you some ego, but obviously big big ego aura. and big heads and stuff are are a no-no you know you gotta be humble but at the same time confident in what you do and woody presents himself very well in that sense and i mean i actually got to spend a weekend with woody and some of his friends when they were here on a yoga retreat they came down and they planned a yoga retreat with jen from jam packed and I was lucky enough to be one of the people that got to go on that. So we got to 
really get close to Woody on a more personal level, which was cool. Like getting to know these guys as well, it makes a, it's a, a huge impact and a huge inspiration for you as an artist. Now, you mentioned that there were three that you directly you played with. Who were the other two? Hands Like, Hands like houses. houses and Crown the Empire. So Hands Like how those are two phenomenal bands and I enjoy them thoroughly. You guys obviously got to have a bit of time with them as well. Yeah, more Crown the Empire. I mean, Carl, you, you hung out more with Hands Like Houses than the rest of us, I think. And with like, I, I hung out with the... They're Crown all the as well. surprisingly really cool guys. I think, uh, the, I think the easiest people to talk to were Hands Like Houses because they're Australians. And I think there's... But there's a bit less of a of a of a culture uh, difference between them. Yeah. So it was actually quite easy to talk to talk to them, and they were super cool guys. Like uh, very, I don't know how. Like uh, you can see there, a lot of them are quite spiritual. So that was cool. Uh, but you can see like almost know, like super laid back guys. Uh, Crown the Empire guys were awesome. Actually, they we we've got a cover in our set, which is. Uh, Without, without you by Halsey, or without me? Is it without me or without you? Without me, I think. Is what it's without me. And uh, <laughs> and they recorded it. They like were recording well, it on their phones while we were playing. And I was Andy, like, Whoa. Andy, the vocalist, he was on the side of the stage recording us. That must have really... been quite surreal. Like that's, that's quite something. It was. Eh? It, it, for me, it was like wow. They think we're like it was almost a realization that. Wow, we're actually now good enough that someone of 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 their caliber wants to film a piece of our show. I mean, that's what I felt. Either that, or really he was like, "Wow, these guys are terrible." So I'm quickly going to film it so I can show all my <laughs> friends at home and we can laugh. Oh, I, don't think it was that. <laughs> I know it wasn't that, but that, I'm that, just that, saying. <laughs> that thought also. Wait. Also had that thought. I'm gonna go cry myself to sleep after that. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. I'm hoping it's the good thing. You, you say this like it's not a norm for you, Carl. Crying myself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Every night. Every I just night. Cry constantly. It's, it's only when I <laughs> yeah, you do. Is it just the, the thought of Ben 10 versus Goku? Oh, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That but means they were ben really rad dudes as well because for some reason, all these international shows with Jam Packed always land in my birthday month. So like literally around my birth date. The guys from Crown the Empire and one of the guys from Hands Like Houses, thanks to our manager, recorded a happy birthday message to me, which was pretty cool. So I still have those little personal tidbits from the experience, which is awesome. That, that's pretty cool. Like not many people can say that they have something like that. Like I, I would lord that over people all the time if I had something like that at my disposal. To be honest, like <laughs> there was also yeah, a bit of a, a small one from uh, from our last night when they came over the first time. Um, I think Kate and I had to go do a gig in Sun City, uh, so we missed the show. And then uh, someone filmed uh, Matt uh, saying, doing like a little hello message to me, and saying, "Oh, sorry, you couldn't be at the gig. Hope to see you at the next gig." And then, well, the next gig, we were playing with them. So I went up to him with the little video, and I was like, "Hey, man, remember this? This was me." And he was like, "Oh, dude, that's rad. Welcome. Uh, glad to have you on the on the roster." So that was a, that was a really cool moment as well. So, so enough speaking about the uh, the international bands and the the experiences with them, guys. Let's talk about your album that you've just released. Tell me about this this process yeah. and this this clearly this labor of love that has been sent out to everyone. Who can tell the story best? Because it's a long story. Yeah, yeah. it's a very long. You're story. dying to talk, Cole. Just talk. About three years ago, they, uh, uh, somebody came up to us and they had just watched the show of ours at Sundowners, and they said that they. Loved it. They thought it was phenomenal. They wanted to give us a endorsement. Their company, who uh, I don't know, bought a stake with the company. It was a lighting it, company. So I'm not going to stake with. No, the don't, we don't need to divulge those so, details. But yeah. Yeah. So basically, he said, "No, we have to go. You, you've got to go play some shows in Germany because that's where the company's from." So okay, cool. You got to have an Albert album to tour Germany. So we were like, okay, cool. Let's do it. And then, so that never happened. Uh, basically we so but before we knew that wasn't going to happen we started recording an album for it so we got our you know 
excellent ducks in a row and we went uh we went to a studio where we actually recorded the the guitars and bass we tried to record the drums there but it just wasn't wasn't really what we were looking for uh in terms of drum sound but the guitars came out super dope so we we, we kept the guitars and then we went to uh the guy who had actually been recording vocals for with, with uh mike wright for the uh for the drums and the vocals and uh, the drums came out great after that recording and the the vocals came out great and, uh, and so we had all the product parts recorded and it was sounding cool um, and we had uh, sent them to Clint for mix, mixing and mastering so we got had all the recording done at mic except for the guitar and the bass so that's quite a thing and then we'd gotten the mix and the master done at Clint um, so yeah, does anybody want to add on the, something on that in the next three and a half minutes? That that took about two and a half years. <laughs> it was yeah, a very I mean, long, um, expensive learning product. Yeah. Oh, we paid a lot of money it's for it. Very much, it's very much like a hurry up and wait game. And also we learned a lot on the way. So now we know what to do for future recordings. We're not going to make the same mistakes that we made last time. Um, we know the people that we want to use for the next recording. We know the people that we want to do the artwork for the next recording. So we've got all those people in our books now and they're professional. They treat us well. And yeah, so we're going to use them in the future. The artwork was another story as well. Like just every single person that we asked, there was some excuse why they couldn't do it for us, but they would only tell us like two weeks after they had said yes to the project. And then they would tell us like two weeks down the line, no, sorry, this and this, can't do it and then i think it was like the fifth person i think cornet was like the fifth person that we finally found and asked please he got us help. the next day he got us our artwork yeah literally um, and it was exactly, exactly what we wanted exactly what i had envisioned in my brain like exactly what i wanted he just put it on paper and i was like wow think, thank you and i think that's the, the, the kate and i had a had a had a uh, one of the raising bars raising the bars i don't know if you watched it we, we discussed a couple of mistakes music, uh, musicians could be making without even realizing it. And it's one of the things is, you know, we learned from this, we learned so much from the making of this album, you know, and just being professional in South Africa is really what this music scene needs more of. And like yeah. Corne yeah. is just amazing. Even if amazing. you are, yeah, he is amazing. And we know him personally on a personal level. I know Cole knows him very well. Um, but even if they are your friends, like still treat them with the same respect that you would give your other paying clients. It's not like we were asking our friends to do us favors, you know, we would yeah. definitely pay them for their time and their, their, um, talent, you know? So just, we've learned that not everybody is there and willing to help you as much as you yeah. no, like i can so agree with you on that professionalism sure is, right a, is a really big aspect of something that we, we definitely need more of in the scene the community and this is not just like you're saying with the musicians themselves but the people who support it as well definitely yes. Yes. the fan base needs to go out there and support all of the local bands and all of the local like um production companies that host shows and stuff mm -hmm. like they need to they need to realize that without them, there's going to be, there's going to be no industry. Right. So they need to carry on doing it and supporting everybody. That's the only way we'll survive. Yeah, so it was quite a process, this album, but seeing the reactions like Friday was, it, it blew our expectations away. Mm, right? Made it all worth it. It was insane. Exactly. It was awesome. Incredible. A lot of blood, sweat and tears has gone into this album and the making of this album and the payoff was well worth it just yeah. seeing how many people have enjoyed it and hearing everybody like tell us what they like the most about it and what their favorite songs are yeah i think so, one of yeah, the coolest even, things yeah carry on and even if the some of the criticism like hasn't been the greatest you know we still take that in and consider it and you know as long as it's coming from a place of you know um they're trying to help us out and make us better then we'll take it in but if it's just a dude that's trying to be nasty then it's like take oh. it on the chin you know okay then yeah mm -hmm. sort of like that. you gotta have uh you gotta have thick skin for it so 
Yeah, we, we know that. We understand that. But yeah, we, we're all open to criticism, I think. And I think one of the coolest things about the, the album coming out is that there's not like one song that everyone likes. There's a lot of people that like a lot of different songs on it. So that in itself was really cool to see awesome. coming out. It's like, yeah, you know, we, we're not just good at making one song. We're kind of good at making a few songs. <laughs> <laughs> just to, give you, to give you context, I've fangirled about this completely. I've just played it to anyone who will listen. So, yes. <laughs> so my, my colleagues unwillingly know who you are. So <laughs> good. <laughs> you must know our favorite colors. Sorry, mine's, colleagues. Mine's <laughs> my favorite color. I think I colleague. The, the first thing, the, the first one I heard, basically, I had the album running up on my way to work when, on Friday when it came out. And the first song I heard, because I think the first one on the other thing is, it's one of the songs that you released as a single. And then mm-hmm. it's King of Fools under that. Uh, I think mm-hmm. Kat, that's that's the first time I've ever heard you swear in a song, and it caught me so off guard. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's quite angry. <laughs> you can hear it in recording. <laughs> That's There's true. a lot of that. Yeah, in that case, every song has a swear word in it. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to keep at least one swear per recording. <laughs> make a montage. No, what is per take? Per take. Per take. <laughs> One day there's just going to be an F-bomb like album dropped by Kate and it's just going to be different diff- different ways he's dropped the F-bomb in, in the recording. Like someone said, just make a montage out of it. And just... but yeah, I that... really would appreciate that. I would love to hear all the different ways I say it because it's one of the words that I do. I don't know if we're allowed to swear on here, by the I mean, way. You are. It is completely, oh, you are okay, completely cool. free to say whatever you want. It is. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Because I've been like holding back. <laughs> so I, I, have, I have a mouth of a sailor. Like I'll swear every second word. Irish. If I want. An Irish. Uh, the mouth of an Irish. Yeah, well, I am Irish. So it makes sense. But yeah, I, I would love to, to hear like a montage of me saying it because everybody says I say it with such conviction. No regret. Yeah. Not even one she, uh, My sister, obviously, she, my, my, my sister lives in Australia. And then she sent me a message uh, the next day. I think it was the next day. Was the day. I can't remember, but I get this message. Carl, I love the album. Thanks for the warning on song two. I had the girls in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even like, it's not even a subtle swear. It's like, a, you know about it. It seems like It's like, is. that's the only thing. It What's is the hilarious? focal point. <laughs> I've just been editing something with it in. And what's hilarious is there's not... The first time, it's literally the only instrument going is Kate's F bomb. It's everything yeah. stops in it. <laughs> Have, it. <laughs> Have that you basically is <laughs> the way it's going. I love it. Now, in, in your in your personal opinions, each of you, like obviously, this once again was a labor of love. You guys have made something you're really happy with. Do each of you have a favorite song? on that album is it something that i see Caleb, caleb's nodding away there he's got one that he obviously enjoys now this isn't necessarily from a just a standpoint of your favorite song but something that your favorite to play it's got the most like fun mm. sort of thing to play that's a tough one caleb's gonna go first because i know exactly what he's dying to say i have, I have a song that i'm so proud of and uh i'm bleak because it's not one of the hits <laughs> <laughs> over the last few days it's pinned it's it's uh it's blink very up. blinky very blinky and i'm a big blink fan and uh the the, the the my part side was a lot of travis c influence going in there um and i honestly thought it would be one of the the biggest songs on the album but uh it's not okay so that's a tough one for me i think <laughs> I got two funnest to play ones. Okay. And it's the ones with the solos. <laughs> no, the one is. <laughs> I think the funnest song to play, one of the funnest songs, yeah, it's, it's a little more, is, is definitely my funnest to play. It's so fast. And it's quite crazy. You got these, I'm showing the camera my, my chord shapes, but you got, <laughs> got these really, I can show you the chords on my guitar. <laughs> <way> for <laughs> Nobody wants to see that, car. <laughs> Nobody wants to not see that, more like. Unsolicited, unsolicited chords no. on guitar. Nobody wants to see that. I was, 
I was very happy with that chord progression. And I think also Travelers is also another one of my favorites to play. I think one where I'm most proud of writing wise, and it's especially for the intro is, is uh, Paralysis. And when I heard that intro and when we recorded that intro, we were just like, yes, the tone, Chana. And so... Yeah. Wasn't that the, wasn't that the first thing I said to you though about that song? I literally like I had a so. like I had like a a fit trying to explain my thoughts on that. <laughs> I've had I've had a couple of guitarists like message me and tell me about the riff and like how cool it is. I'm like I've got a riff, man. I've got a riff that people like. I'm just like this. That guitarists like can appreciate. They're like I see what you did there, kind of thing. Because I do that all the time. I'm, I, I like look at guitars. I'm like, dude. And then someone's looking at my stuff and going, dude. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, do you want to go? Mm-mm, you go. All right. Okay. So I've got two. Uh, one being a little more as well. Because um, on top of uh, Carl's chord progression, I think my bass line on there was really, was really clever. And I really enjoy playing it. And uh, it's also one of those ones where I've gotten a lot of compliments about it. So that kind of it's the same thing as what Carl said, you know, you, you, you compliment other people's stuff and then you have people complimenting your stuff because they like it. So that's, that was a cool one. And then uh, I'd say my favorite is probably collide. Mm. Um, uh, because, okay. Yeah. Everyone, oh, everyone's that. talking about the baseline in it. And I'm just like, yeah, I did that. Uh, I enjoy playing it. <laughs> <laughs> and also Great. the vocals, the vocals are so clever, especially in the chorus. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's a really fun song to play live. Um, yeah, so those are my two picks. Greg sent him a message about that baseline in that song. Greg, from yeah, Chicago. yeah, that oh. was quite a th- that hit me a, a lot more than most because obviously Greg, being who he is, yeah, he was <laughs> like, dude, really well done. I was like, oh well, thank you, thank you very much. That makes me feel all fuzzy and very you know, good about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's hard for me to choose. I've got a couple favorites. I really like King of Fools. That's really fun to sing. I love the theatrical ending with all the vocals going on and all the harmonies and stuff. So I really enjoy singing that one live. Then my favorite one to listen to, I'm torn between Astronauts and Collide. Those are my two favorites to listen Mm -hmm. to. Um, And then Travelers is also one that I thoroughly enjoy singing live. It's so fun to sing that open chorus and ah uh, yeah it's, it's hard mm. to just pick one i and think then, that's what's great about the album for all of us is that yeah. you know we can pick our favorite ones but at the end of the day like it's tough it's tough to choose because we all and we, we enjoy all of them so much We're really proud There's of not a song on that album that i won't stand behind I think that's, that's what, that's what yeah. makes it such an entertaining question though is because it, it's something that you've created out of like a love and a passion for it and then now suddenly being forced to choose one of them it it brings out some really interesting answers it really makes you think about it mm. yeah. yeah definitely very true and then also with paralysis there is it's featuring brandon pratt from red helen how did that come about how did he end up on that on that thing i know there is a bit of a story behind it and Tell me yeah, a bit more about that. It was, it was actually quite cool because we, we hosted like a little competition for our um, like our guest, night. yeah, for our guest vocalist to come and sing that song with us at our last night. We just felt that the song was, was a good song. Like we liked the way we liked it the way it was, but we felt that it, it was missing something. And then we decided to create this competition around it so that somebody could join us on stage at our last night and Brandon Pratt entered and he was supposed to be coming to Cape Town with Red Helen as well to play that Cape Town show with us. And we were like, okay, perfect. Well then you can play, you can, you can take the, the spot for, for the screaming vocals on paralysis in Cape Town. Unfortunately, he never made it to Cape Town um, due to some of the members missing their flights and just traffic was awful for them on the way to the airport. So they missed their flights, unfortunately, and they never made it to play the show with our last night. So we asked him to just send us um, his vocals with the song and we loved them so much. And we were like, well, seeing as though you didn't get to come and sing with us at our last night, why don't you 
just feature on the album. Like that would be pretty cool. And he was happy to do so. So that's what we And uh, yeah. a, a cool little tidbit, Hands Like Houses is like one of uh, Brandon Pratt's like all time favorites. And uh, Red Hill wasn't, I don't think Red Hill was able to perform the Hands Like Houses shows. And uh, so we didn't, need, I didn't even know this. We were like, hey, do you want to, we just wanted him on that song. And then, like, afterwards, he told us uh, how much of a huge Hands Like Houses fan he was. So that was really cool. And just that guy has got so much energy to play. Yeah. Like, after, you know, you, you've played many shows. Like, after a couple of songs, you're just like, it's, it's obviously you start to feel a bit drained and you have to carry on. When that guy hit the stage, there was energy. Yeah, there was an aura. Yeah. <laughs> It was energy. It was but awesome. Yeah, like, I'd say Shady like State with Brandon for that short little time was pretty insane. It's pretty cool. The the energy he brings on stage is nuts. Yeah, it's nuts. But it's also a different kind of energy. Like we have a we have our own energy, and I think it's quite fitting that uh, that when the metal song comes, there's like a different kind of we try to show a bit of a different uh, element. Different. I, I can only I can only imagine because I've seen Red Helen and I've seen Brandon on stage and it would be different to the energy of Red Helen because it's something that's relative to what you guys are doing. I, I would have loved to see it. If you guys ever come to Durban, just you know, make it happen sometime. You know, I'd love to see you guys play again. I would love to be in Durban. I would love to just tour, you know. I'd love that's to be in Durban also, right now, to be honest. <laughs> that's also one of the goals of being in a band, you know. Um, you hope that one day your music will take you around the world. You know, even if it's just in your own country or continent, just travel a little bit, see a little bit and play on many stages and meet many musicians and like-minded people and just make friends. Where's one place that you guys would, would love to play that's outside of the country internationally? What's, what, what would you say that you guys would have your eyes set on as like the, the dream place to go play? Japan. Japan. Okay, Cole, that, that, you've got, you're very biased in this, though. As, so biased. As, <laughs> you're, you're, I'm so biased. I don't know if anyone else in your band is as big a weeb as you are. They're not. <laughs> what yeah. is an anime? Yeah, how do you use it? <laughs> <laughs> Them cartoons. Can I put it in a sentence? No. I'll watch, uh, I'll watch anime too, Cole. I know. Brendan watches anime. I would... If I was going to play anywhere in the world, I would just hope that it's like a festival, like, mm -hmm. like, like one of them big festivals, you know, them if, fancy if, festivals. if Warp Tour was still a thing, that would be pretty cool to, to experience. I think if Warp Tour was a thing, that would be our ultimate. That's yeah. that would yeah. be our ultimate thing to play. And then what's that other one? Slam Dunk. Slam Dunk looks like Slam Dunk too. Yeah. Is there also Soundwave, which is in, I think Australia. It's, Oh yeah. yes, yeah, that would be cool. That, that would also like I think like cater to your guys' sound quite well because you also see bands like um God damn it, what they did a cover of Little Lion Man. Um not 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 Yes. Not Seen like the response that, that they've gotten there. So Yeah, yeah I'd yeah. love to go to Australia. I've got like I'm super lucky and um the band would be super lucky if we had to tour everywhere because I have a huge family that live all over the world. So we would never have to worry about accommodation. We could <laughs> stay with literally somebody that is related to me everywhere, like all over the world. Basically spread like a parasite across the world. You just, yeah. everywhere you go. You know, right. My grandparents, they, they had eight kids between the two of them. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of aunts and uncles. And no PlayStation of, in those days. No. And lots of cousins. And they're all quite a lot older than me, so they're all pretty established in their lives. So they've all got nice homes, and so I'm ready. I'm re they they're ready to receive yeah, accommodation, us ready and waiting, and accommodate us. So we got accommodation ready. Uh, this is the yeah. first I've heard of it, Kate. Come now. What? I tell you all the time. My 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 family's always keen. Like my cousins were messaging me and saying, you know, you need to tour Europe because we'd be front and center, and we'd follow you around, and we'd make sure you. Were, you would you always be fed and you know a bed and to they sleep pay in. For it? Well, no, they're not going to pay for it, but they'll pay to come and watch us. Because <laughs> Kate has a has a, you you're a, you're an Irish citizen. Yeah, I am. I've got an Irish passport, so I can enter the European countries 
without visa, which is awesome. And I'm a Portuguese citizen. You just got to let them know. I love how Kate led with like what sort of privileges and benefits that gives her. And you just, you know, it's like, is I'm, it just... I'm thinking of ways to do this. <laughs> I'm thinking of ways to do this right now. We got two freeloaders here. Can't yeah. find their heritage. <laughs> yeah, what the flip? Look at him and he's playing his stupid game. Put your phone on. the heritage and now we must suffer. You, you trying to get your Canadian, aren't you? Yeah, at the moment I'm just waiting to see if they... Because my dad was a citizen, uh, that qualifies me to be a citizen. So uh, all my paperwork's gotten through. So now I'll just hurry up and wait. And myself? How Afrikaans are you? I don't know if you can tell by my, my accent, but yeah, you know. I can't tell by your accent. <laughs> that's, that's exactly the point. Being, being, a six foot white, being a six foot white boy, English boy in an Afrikaans neighborhood who didn't play rugby, I did not have fun times in high school. <laughs> Marcel Smart, that is an Afri- there's Afrikaans lineage in my brief. So basically, I go nowhere. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm just asking. You reside in Romania. Romania. <laughs> Romania. But we all have to remain in place for now, so don't even worry about it. You can be whatever kind of citizen you want to stay where Spe- you are. Speaking, speaking about all being stuck in place, how has lockdown been treating you guys as a band? And how has it affected your ability to, to practice if you have been able to do so at all? And just your general life as artists. Do I want to take this one again first? It's going to just be me first all the time. Well, I'll talk, but I always wait for you because I know that if I start oh, talking... Your voice is soothing. You, you, you talk over me a bit, so... No, but yeah, they well, want to... It's I'm just going to sideline. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? He's so fucking rude. No, you <laughs> are... Thanks. Thanks. I remember <laughs> one of our very first radio interviews was the most awkward point in my life. Cause, and luckily it was it was like I don't know I never actually heard that that heard that interview back or anything like that but nobody spoke and then I was like I want to speak because if nobody speaks then there's not going to be an interview and then we made like a semi agreement after that that I would speak and now everyone just wants to speak so you know what keeps <laughs> breaking laws Kate speak your speak I will speak my speak. Okay, so lockdown has been pretty hard on all of us, I think, because we all, um, you know, earn money through the industry, whether it's with our original music or, you know, elsewhere. I know, Brandon, you were working with YYY, so that was mm. that was pretty intense. When lockdown started, you literally lost all of your income because there's no shows, mm. so there's no, there's no pay. So yeah. it's been tough. Um, and finding other ways for us to stay creative because that can have a huge effect on you Um, mentally yeah yeah, when when you're stuck inside and you can't see your friends and you can't be or play together as a band you lose a lot of creativity you also lose your fitness as a musician like a gigging musician Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i cannot believe that i used to play multiple shows on a weekend or whatever you know i'm struggling to even get through practice just controlling my voice because I've lost so much stamina and, and so much vocal mm. fitness because it's we just haven't too, yeah. been doing it as much. So mm-hmm. it's, it's had a huge effect on us, but I think we're slowly coming back to the, the groove now. Um, luckily for us, we've got this beautiful space at my place um, for rehearsals. So we have a practice once a week in the morning on a Tuesday and we're getting back into the swing of things. So it's coming on nicely again. Mm-hmm. Now, it's it's, it's good to hear that you guys are practicing. Sorry, yeah, Brandon. We... Brandon, I <laughs> that just completely spoke over you there, dude. I'm so sorry. Uh, no worries, man. I, I just wanted to say that you know, we, we just want to, after that little, I think it was the first three to five weeks of, the, of actual lockdown where everyone was like, okay, well, there's nothing we can do. We just have to sit and wait. And then coming back and realizing, oh, damn, you know, uh, fitness musically is a thing. And, you know, if you lose it, it's very difficult to get back. So I think that's why we we are getting back in full swing of things because we realize, you know, you gotta you got to keep at it. Otherwise, you will lose it. And um, it's it's difficult to get it back. 
it's scary how quickly you lose it. It's actually. Very scary. It, it really is. It's like I, quite honestly, I'm sitting here wondering, do I know how to play any of my band songs anymore? <laughs> like <laughs> that was first practice for us when we got back like, in. We were like, oh dang, how does that song start? <laughs> pick up your yeah, guitar and yeah. how do I play this trumpet? <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think the message as I got to the gate I was like I'm here I think because yeah. uh, you have to be here for so long <laughs> only if I'm at the right place new guitarist who this you know <laughs> you know but well, at least first practice, like, I, yeah. I've rocked up to practice without an instrument and I've that was that. Prob- probably one of the most embarrassing moments of my life thankfully my I drummer did didn't step forgot herself and she wasn't there at all so i kind of got that redeeming that that moment that no one really had to know you about that moment didn't get your whole your whole body somewhere else at least yes exactly <laughs> just just an extension of yourself <laughs> pretty much i've also arrived to practice where there was no practice I yeah but brendan you're a bit oh. like that hey yeah you often do things yeah, like that but so one day we get a message brendan's like i'm here and we're all like where where <laughs> <laughs> I, suppose it's, I suppose it's better than rocking up to like a gig or you know something like that and then being like guys where are you <laughs> well, that would have gig. happened if we didn't establish the am and pm of the stream oh yes i i, I heard about that carl was telling me that you thought I think so. There was a miscommunication, and it was thought that to be at half past seven in the morning. So Brandon would have rocked up there, like five a.m., <laughs> ready to set up a for away. Oh, oh, wait, wait. so so there was a. Uh, we're now there, this has happened to Kate, and it's happened to Brandon. Just by the way, so Marsha, like, remember we had to establish because to be fair, I did say seven thirty, not nineteen thirty. But Brandon also gets confused with that stuff because. He was like, why, why would we do the stream so early for our album live stream? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a Saturday. Everyone's at home. It's lockdown. Everyone's at home. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> His logic works a little differently to ours, but we love him. Kate, you did the same thing. <laughs> I didn't. When you, I didn't. Because you typed out 730 when we were talking about the stream. You said seven dot dot. 30 right and then when you were talking about this live well this um like thing that we were going to do um you you just said the the time seven thirty. you didn't say in the evening or in the morning or whatever so i assumed that it was going to be in the morning before anybody goes to work or something i don't know so it is totally the same thing it's not the same thing (laughs) it's exactly the same thing (laughs) it's the same thing marcel you're neutral what do you think so I, I don't know what to think. This has never been, I've never experienced this issue before. This is, this is the level of politics in Yumi and the Harmony. <laughs> okay. Mostly time based. So to give you guys an idea of politics in a band, I, running from a full moon was three siblings and myself. I would have to communicate to each one of them individually because if you thought living under the same fucking roof meant they communicated, <laughs> you were wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I've rocked up to band practice at their house and a member has not known that we were having band practice. (laughs) But you live here. (laughs) Exactly. This was my thought process as well. So I understand politics, believe me. Yes, we're very lucky. Mostly. We're we're very lucky with our politics. We don't we don't have like as hectic politics as some other bands, you know, we have a few disagreements here and there with like artistic um, direction but that's more the admin side of things when it comes to writing i think we all click pretty well and yeah. nobody gets nobody gets offended if somebody doesn't like something or if we want to try something a different way we, we work pretty well together in that sense I, I, I learned something really cool from woody i think it was his live stream and how you know something about touring and and like i asked him like how do you deal with disagreements within the band and you're like and I, I think we've got, we've always had that mentality. And like, you got to think about the goal. And if you all have a common goal, you'll get through these. This, there's always going to be banned politics and you've got to have that mutual goal. Mm-hmm. And you've got to work towards that goal together. Damn straight. No, that's some really good advice. That's, that's, that, that makes a lot of sense. It's not even my advice. 
<laughs> yeah, he's quite. He, Woody, Woody is quite insightful in that in that regard. Now, I had a question, <laughs> and it's completely gone because <laughs> I'm not sure what. Carl hates silence. So no, the minute silence. that nobody is speaking on the stream, he he's like, uh, "I gotta speak because it's awkward." Wait, did you, did you mean silence? I'm pretty sure you said violence. No silence. I oh, violence. I was like, I heard violence. I was like, okay, I wasn't. Is that back to the conflict thing or? I also hate violence, just so we're clear. <laughs> I'm a pacifist. <laughs> he, yeah, he's not an advocate. Then I'll pass my fist through your fist. <laughs> okay, I'll go home now. Cheers, guys. <laughs> <laughs> now, guys, so we've, we've gotten on here for quite a bit of time. And in closing, mm. do you guys have any shout outs to anyone? Any specific thing that you would like to say? Anything like that? I think most importantly, if I can just jump in. Uh, is our manager, Danica. Yeah. That was actually part of my question. Was, Sorry. <laughs> you just yeah, reminded me. If it, if it wasn't for her, we would not be where we are now. 100%. Yeah, she right. puts in a lot of hard work behind the scenes. Like she might not be on stage with us and she might not be in the band room practicing with us and writing music with us, but she does one of the most important things behind the scene. And that's just all the admin behind a band like we don't have a label that does all of that for us so she's the one that's you know doing all of that for us creating relationships and booking us for awesome things so we we cannot thank her enough she's just done so much she's the band mom she is she is the band mom yeah she's yeah i, I don't know where we'd be without her to be quite honest yes mm -hmm. this band the band business is a lot more than what it looks like on the outside. And, you know, thank you to Tanika. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Brendan just reminded me of my question, which you guys have just inadvertently answered. And the question was, like, how important would you guys say is it to have a manager of a band? And in mm -hmm. terms of, so you, well, you definitely, you've, you've answered that question. In, but, it all depends on the band, I guess. So if you've got somebody in your band already that is very good at creating relationships and um, doing emails and like all the, all the paperwork and everything like that, then you wouldn't need somebody else. But when it comes to us, we are so focused on playing music and writing music. And it's all about the music for us that we forget about the, the business side of it, you know, the, the admin mm. side of it. And just having Tanika there to keep us on point and heading towards the right goal, um, it's it's very it's very important, mm. definitely. Mm -hmm. It's also nice to have someone who's a bit more objective and uh, you Outside know, coming, opinion. yeah. Obviously, you can be super passionate about your your own project, but when you have someone who comes to you as a uh, as from the who can be from the point of view of outside of the the you know instrumental yeah. side of it, you know it, it's helpful. It's it's really insightful. Mm -hmm. mm, definitely. Oh. I've had a hell of a time chatting to you guys. I've been wanting to do this for ages. Thank you so much for taking the time to come through and actually uh, thank you for having us, Marcel. and have a chat thank with us. Thank you so much uh, for thanks, having dude. us. Appreciate it, man. This was a lot of fun. Thanks, Marcel. Uh, I, I, I'm glad. I'm stoked to hear that. And. Uh, in closing, the what we do is that we play out of the episode with one of your tracks. Which track would you guys like us to close this episode out on? Good question. Should we say the album single? Yeah, I think or, so. Or should we say Travelers to get another Maybe. song? Another song, some. Uh, some okay, Marcel, yeah. up to you. Let's turn it on its head. Or we yeah. should say. Marcel, Marcel, you should pick. Yeah. You guys are like the third band to have done this to me in the last like, <laughs> three episodes. And I always end up with a, ah, uh, shit. No. <laughs> nah, don't um, be that. Like I said, we're, we're all a fan of all the songs on the, on the album. So, I mean, if you had to pick one, we're going to be happy with it. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll put the two against each other. Cool. And then where can people find you guys on social medias? For we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. Don't judge us. We're on, uh, uh, Twitter, we're on YouTube. Yeah. We're on all your favorite streaming platforms. 
And all of them pretty much have the same handle. It's just at Yumi and the Harmony. Um, I think Twitter is at YMathOfficial. But yeah, everything else is at Yumi and the Harmony. So wherever you go, you can find us there. And then we also have a website, guys. So you mm -hmm. can go to www.yumiandtheharmony.co.za and you will find everything, all of our links to all of our things on Spotify, on Apple Music, on Google Play, on Deezer, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all them good places. You'll find it on our website. All right. Guys, I've honestly had a blast chatting to you. It's really been, it's been so much fun. Thank you so much once again for taking the time. Well, thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. What a legend.